Welcome back to Bargaining in War. This lecture is on uncertainty and incomplete information. It is the first of our lectures that come from chapter five of the textbook. So far, in everything we've discussed, each player has known everything that's relevant about the bargaining situation at hand. So if we have a zero one interval, everyone knows that A's probability of victory P falls right there. Everyone knows that A's cost for war CA falls right here. Everyone knows that B's cost for war falls right here, which means everyone knows that the bargaining range is right here. This is common knowledge. Everyone knows that this is the set of agreements that both sides prefer to fighting a war. Now, imagine we're looking at a situation where A is making some sort of demand out of B. We've done this before, and we know that when A knows everything there is to know about the situation at hand, A can demand P plus CB. And if it does that, well, B looks at that demand and realizes that's what it's going to be getting from fighting a war, and so it is perfectly happy to accept that deal, which works out great for A, because A gets to keep everything else. A is making out great as a consequence of knowing exactly how costly war is to B and knowing the relative distribution of power. It knows exactly how much it can extract out of B, and so it can take advantage of that. In practice, this is a heroic assumption. Let's take costs, for example. Suppose you're state A. If you know what CB is, that is saying you know how much B values the situation at hand. Remember that the costs for war implicitly incorporate how much value the other side places in what you're negotiating over. If they care a lot about the subject at stake, then the cost will be rather small. If they don't care at all about the issue at stake, then the cost will look rather large. This is something that is an internal characteristic of people and leaders within the country, how much they value an issue at stake. So it's pretty heroic to say that you know exactly what that is. You may have a decent idea, but to say you know exactly what it is is a very strong assumption. So let's think about that. Let's just give a preview about what that might imply. Imagine that you don't know whether the bargaining range looks like what we have right here, or what we have down here. You might know what the probability of victory is, and you might know what your own costs for war are. But you might think, you might speculate, that B has rather large costs. We'll call those large costs CB prime. CB prime greater than CB. So this is saying that B has high costs versus a situation where B has low costs. Imagine that you don't know which is true. You don't know whether B has high or low costs, but you suspect that B has high costs. Well, if you suspect that, you might have a temptation to make a very large demand. After all, B has high costs in what you're thinking, and if B has high costs, you can extract a lot out of B. You can just get a huge amount as a consequence of that. Well, you may be wrong, and if you are wrong, Think about what happens if B has low costs. If you try making a demand right here, if B has low costs, B's payoff for war gets it this extra amount all the way out here. And so it would prefer to fight a war under those circumstances. Which means if you have a situation where B does not have very clear costs, A is not sure whether it has high costs or low costs, perhaps A will be inspired to make a demand that the low cost type will find unacceptable, and maybe that will cause a war. And we'll actually see something like that later on. That'll be the first half of what we're discussing here when we're looking at uncertainty and bargaining and warfare. But there's another type of uncertainty that's also worth investigating. So that was what happens if we don't know whether B has high costs or low costs. We might also be unsure about what the relative distribution of power is. So we might agree that we know that the costs are CA and CB, but we might not be sure whether A is strong or A is weak. So I'm drawing these things so that the bargaining range is here. These are supposed to be the same size. Okay, so we're all in agreement about what the costs for war are. What we're not in agreement is whether A is strong 
or A is weak. So one way about thinking about this is A might not know how many tanks B owns. That's pertinent information for figuring out who's going to win the war. Because if B has a lot of tanks, then A is relatively weak. If B has very few tanks, then A is relatively strong. Same thing with how skilled those tank drivers are, how many soldiers the other side has, how many aircraft the other side has, and so forth. Well, we can see a similar sort of story here. Got to add those primes in both places. We see a similar sort of story here with A's temptation. If A is really under the impression that it's strong, then it would want to make an offer or a demand way out here, leaving B just this small amount. And if A is in fact strong and B is relatively weak, then A can get away with that and secure a very large quantity for itself and be very happy. But once more, if A is actually weak, if B privately knows that it's strong and has lots of tanks and A is relatively weak, then because a demand will only get B this amount, whereas rejecting and fighting a war will give B that extra amount, B might reject that demand. So what we're going to be exploring in this unit are the subtleties of uncertainty and how that sort of uncertainty can rationally lead to conflict. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you again. Take care.